So once again, welcome to Canada College Holistic Orientation and Mentoring Experience. We are thrilled to have you here today's session. Getting off to the right start brings together a panel of experts from our admissions and financial aid offices to guide you through the exciting beginning of your journey. This session is specifically designated for students who will be attending the college drive, Commerce Core, Aviation, or West Paris Sound Campus. So let's dive in this enriching experience together and set the stage for an incredible time at Canada College. For today's session, our panel consists of Andrea Black, Financial Aid Officer, Jennifer Sutton, Records Officer, Danielle Cooper, Domestic Admissions Officer, Kathy Giesler, who will be covering information about pathways and credit transfers for this session, and Kim Hamilton, who will be covering, covering information about the domestic health plan um, and student government. We also have additional support staff who are behind the scenes monitoring the Q&A and answering any questions submitted. Get ready for an exciting session all about admissions, financial aid, and credit transfer at Canada College. If you've got questions about departments of services, don't worry, we got you covered. There will be other table talk sections to cover all of your questions, plus orientation videos you can explore on the Canada Orientation website, which we will be share in the chat later. So take a look. Uh, we know we've got a bunch of eager attendees, so to keep it, things organized, we'll be using the Q&A feature. Your question will be answered and everyone can see them for added insight. If you want to be discreet, feel free to ask anonymously. Remember to also please keep question and comment respectful and appropriate. This session is being recorded and a copy of the chat transcript will be made available. So let's dive in and make the most of this interactive experience. Thanks, Zenny. So we'll kick off the session by delving into some of the most frequently asked questions that we've received over the years. We'll cover all the key topics you're curious about. After that, we'll turn our attention over to the Q&A chat box and make sure to address any other questions that you may have. So get ready to have your questions answered and make the most of this engaging and interactive session. We'll begin with some questions uh, from financial aid. So, Sunny, take it away. Sure. So, I invite Andrea Black uh, to answer our first question is, what is OSA? Am I eligible to apply? Hey, so OSA is a government-funded program that can help you pay for college. Uh, it can assist you with tuition costs, living costs, childcare costs, uh, traveling to back to home costs. Um, it offers loans and grants. Loans is money you may need to pay back. Grants is money you don't have to pay back as long as you remain in your course and pass 60% of a course load. Um, it, uh, it's a helper uh, funded program. Um, the ministry expects students to contribute to their education, um, report scholarships and bursaries that you already know that you're getting um, and any assets. Okay, thank you. Uh, yep. Andrea, what if I am not eligible for OSA? What are my options? Okay, so students can apply uh, to lines of credit at a bank. Uh, some banks uh, may only charge you the interest on the money that you borrow. Uh, so say you borrow 15,000 from a bank, and you only use three, they're only gonna charge you the interest on that 3,000 that you used. You may uh, look at external bursaries and scholarships such as the Legion. Uh, they may offer students assistance with their um, studies. Um, you can also look at our scholarship and bursary page. Our bursary is open on October 1st and our scholarships open on November 1st. Good to know. Um, I'm talking talking more about budgeting tips. How can I budget my money for the school year so I don't run out? So if you're an OSAP student and you get your assessment, keep in mind you're going to get 60% of your funding in September and the other 40% in January. We do offer uh, budgeting sheets. If students want a sheet 
they can email finaid at kennedorcollege.ca and we can send it to them in their email. Um, it's good to build a realistic budget for yourself during school. Uh, you can list all your income and monthly expenses for the school year, such as rent, clothing, food, utilities. Um, it's a good idea to meal plan during your study period, um, buying things in bulk, bringing coffee from home, all those things add up to the study period. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Also, what is the best way to find out more information about financial aid? Um, so we offer information on our website, Canada's homepage under uh, the support tab paying for school. Our scholarship bursary link is there as well. We do offer jobs throughout uh, the school year that you can apply to. And you can always email finaid at canadorcollege.ca if you have specific questions and we can assist you then. Awesome. Thank you, Andrea. Okay, no problem. <clears throat> Next up, we'll turn it over to Kathy to talk about some pathways questions. So Kathy, our first question is, what is a credit transfer? <clears throat> oh, you're muted. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Um, so a credit transfer is when you transfer prior courses that you've completed at another post-secondary institution to Canada. So we accept courses from any post-secondary institution, including international institutions. And what credits can I transfer to Canada? In order to be eligible for transfer credits, the course must share the same learning outcomes and similar content to the Canada course. So courses must have a final grade of 60% or C or higher, uh, unless otherwise stated by the program. And you can receive transfer credits up to a maximum of 75% of your Canada or college program curriculum. Fantastic. And how and when do students, or how and when, when can students apply for uh, credit transfers? Sure. Uh, so we accept transfer credit applications at any time, uh, but to ensure you get the results before the semester drop deadline, applications are due 15 business days prior to the start of the semester. So in the case of this fall semester, uh, you would want to apply by August 14th. Fantastic. And last question for you, what do I need to apply for a credit transfer? Um, well, there's three things, actually, Jill. So you need to submit an official transcript uh, for non canada or institutions. Uh, you'll need to submit uh, full course outlines for each non canada or course being reviewed. And, <clears throat> excuse me, finally, there's a transfer credit fee of $25 for one course or $50 for two or more courses that's due at the time of registration or application, rather. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kathy. You're welcome. Thank you. Now we're going to talk about registration question. I will ask Jen and Daniel help us with these questions. And the first one is, when does registration begin? What if I am unavailable to register at that time? Yeah, welcome all. We are going to start to open the registration August 9th. It will open. It'll It'll open actually in a staggered format based on the program campus. So every program will have its own different time slot. Um, I would just say watch for an email that's supposed to be coming out actually this Friday with all the times for your program. If you are unable to register on that date or time slot, registration will be open until September 18th, which is the 10-day count um, for most programs, except for the aviation program, which it will be closing the first day of school just because there's a certain amount of hours that those students need to meet. Um, and if there's another program that starts early as well, um, it's usually the 10, 10 business days that it will remain open till from the start of the program. Okay, okay, clear. Thank you, Jen. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question is, how do I register for classes? What happens if I have issues when I am registering? Uh, we will have different support um, sessions open for students to contact us via a Zoom link. So you will uh, be sent in directly to any one of us support persons who can help you through the registration process. And there's also a video, which is kind of cool too. So you watch the video, it'll show you how to do the web registration process. And the support will be available for the first uh, three days of since registration opens. So we will have the support Zoom links for you. Okay, here sounds good. 
uh, what is my student number and where can I find it? Your student number can be usually found on any offer letter that you receive um, that's sent out to you. It's also included. It usually starts with an A00 number and it'll be on your invoice as well. And it's a unique identifier to just yourself. Sure. Uh, talking about tuition fee, do I need to pay my full tuition before I can register for classes? Yes, you, you normally do. Um, if you're a sponsored student, we do need to have your sponsorship letter on file. So once the system recognizes we do have that letter keyed into the system, it will let you through to the registration process. If you're OSAP, you usually make a $250 um, deposit, but it'll let you through if you're an OSAP student as well, as long as you're flagged as OSAP in our student or in our student system. Um, sorry, go ahead, Andrea. I wanted to add to that, Jen, I'm getting questions regarding OSAP. So if your OSAP submitted all your documents and you're approved, will deduct the tuition right off your OSAP and the school will, will be paid directly? And the rest of the OSAP will go to you. I just wanted to make that clear. Just, you know, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. I think I think I'm done with that answer for sure. Okay, and just to clarify, how do I submit a payment? You can pay through online banking using your student number as the account. I believe you have to drop the A. Correct me if I'm wrong, anyone. Um, or you can go onto our website and you can make payment through the Paying for College. There's a link there. And you just click the link and you can make payment through that portal as well. Okay. And the final question is, how do I get a student car or bus pass? Yeah, after registration, because you, you do have to definitely be registered, um, we will send you a link closer to the start of school and that you'll have to activate. You'll activate the link and then you will have access to a student card and a bus pass as well. The bus pass doesn't start until the first day of school though, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, you'll be sent an email closer to school asking you to click the link and activate. Sounds good. Thank you, Jane. You're welcome. So next up, we've got questions on class schedule and program delivery. So Jen, it might be a couple bit more for you if you want to keep yourself unmuted for a couple more questions. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Starting first, how and when will I get a class schedule and do I choose my own schedule? You can register. We'll send out the link this uh, this Friday, just giving you a heads up of when the times are, or on the 9th for registration. So you're just going to log in. There's the video and you'll complete the registration process. It's uh, If you watch the guided video, it'll really help you with some tips and tricks. And then you complete the registration process. And at the very end of that process, your schedule will pop up with all the different times and cl classes and room numbers. Uh, you don't usually get to choose your own schedule. It is by block, which is already predetermined courses and schedules and times and classrooms. Fantastic. And so when looking at my class schedule, how can I tell if my class is going to be online or in person? Yeah, just in the little box where the course is, it'll usually show you a class number or a room number to attend to. Or if it doesn't have one listed, then you can assume it's online. Perfect. And speaking of online, what does hybrid program delivery mean? Does it mean I need to be on campus? Yeah, I would usually say, yeah, because hybrid is a bit a bit of a mixture of online courses and in class. So yeah, you definitely need to be on campus for those in-class sessions. Perfect. And lastly, can I change my program before the start of classes? Uh, yeah, you can within the first 10 days, um, if there is room into the other program that you're thinking. You would just simply submit a program change form. Um, you would have to definitely notify OSAP on your end, right, Andrea, just to make sure. And if you meet the admission requirements and there is room, then yes, it might be an option. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Now I will invite Kim Hamilton, if you agree, to talk a little bit about healthcare plan. And this is my first question. What is covered under the student health plan? Is dental cover, for example? Okay, so under the health plan, unfortunately, dental is not covered unless it is due to accident. Um, Canador does have a free dental clinic on site that you can access for cleanings. It offers a range of other services as well. 
Um, so you can always check that out. Um, for the other benefits covered under the plan, you can view all of the details at guard.me slash Canador. And um, there you can view all of the details of the plan. And there are three options to choose from. Um, so yeah, that, uh, it's, there's a lot to go through as far as the different coverages eligible under the various plans, but um, yeah. Perfect, thanks. Uh, my next question is, how do I change my health plan? Okay, to change your health plan, again, you'd go to that website. You can do this between September 21st and October 2nd. And um, it has to be done within that time period. And uh, you can just check out the different plans. As I mentioned, there's the balanced plan, which you're automatically enrolled in. It's covered in your ancillary fees. And uh, there's, the enhanced drug plan and the enhanced extended healthcare plan. They all have different benefits covered at different levels. So you can check that out on the website as well. Okay. And um, what about opt out? Can I opt out if I am already covered, for example, by my parents? And yes. if so, is there a date I need to opt out by? Yes, uh, if you're covered under another benefit plan, your parents, your partners, or if you have one yourself somewhere else, then you may choose to op opt out. And you have to do that within a specific time period. It's always been September 30th, but I believe this year it will be again between September 21st and October 2nd. Um, the same deadline is also in effect should you wish to choose one of the other plans, as I mentioned earlier, the enhanced drug plan or the enhanced extended health plan. And um, also, if you want to add a dependent at an additional cost, you can add a spouse for $150 per year. This includes any children you might have. Or you, if you're a single parent, you can add a child or children for $125 a year. And all of this has to be done within that time period. Okay, interesting. Thank you. I'm talking about claims of refund. How do we make a claim? Where can we find more information about it? Okay, so again, you refer to that website, the guard.me slash Canada site. And um, you also make your claims online there. You can submit them via snail mail if uh, that is your choice, but uh, optimally you will submit them via the website. And um, during the first period of time, you are covered from September 1st through August 31st every year. But during the first several weeks, you may end up paying out of pocket just because your information has not yet been uploaded to the guard.me site. And then you would submit a claim after the fact and be reimbursed for that. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Kim. You're very welcome.